New product time. Here we go. Okay. Zoom. The first ones we'll go through really quick. Yeah, they're super fast. Okay. So this week we have the multiple issues of Magpie, the best, longest running Raspberry Pi. This is magazine. like the official one too. This is the official one. It's made on a Raspberry Pi for Raspberry Pi enthusiasts, and it is fantastic. Um, we're the only supplier in the Look, US. Look, this one's space themed too. Yeah, I guess I can. Um, we're the only supplier uh, in the U.S., so for the people who want to get these, so they don't have to get them all the way from the U.K., you can order them from Yeah, us. it even says you can get them from Adafruit on yeah. the back. Sweet! Yep. And the other cool thing, I think they still say it too, is um, uh, they're proud about this. This this magazine was made on a pie. Yeah. These are Raspberry Pi to make it. And it's actually yeah. like a really nice magazine. It's got a lot of projects. Yeah. It's nicely printed. So a $35 it, computer can be good enough to you know, work on magazine stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's like product advertisements. Anyways. Next up, we have so we have all the lace issues. We have now. a couple cases. These cases, um, these are for the Beetle Bun Black. Yeah, they come in black and they come in silver. And we have these. We had a similar case for the Raspberry Pi. It was really popular. And these are like really beautiful cases designed in France, um, and uh, they're anodized aluminum. And we have a silver one. We don't. Really, do you mind if I try to try to mess with the? Overhead? Okay, let's mess with the overhead. Yeah, uh, this is so me. deadly. What I'm about to do. Yeah, this, this might all catch on fire. All right, so they um, they have these beautiful cases and they have these like really nice acrylic <clears> tops <throat> in clear yeah. and silver. Sorry, clear and smoke, and um, it's just like a really beautiful case. You want to try it? Yeah, I'm gonna try it. This is really dangerous, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Oh, it worked. Whew, that Whew. was scary. Okay. Okay, so um. Hold on, I gotta uh, do this thing and then I'm gonna do the lock. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was not expected, so I'll clean off some space. Um, and you get a uh, bunch of tools with it. You fit, fit your Beagle Bone Black in here. There's some nice standoffs. It's, it's a very nice aluminum case. It even has bumpers on the bottom. And then we also have um, a version which is like dark version, which is black with like a smoke case uh, top. It's not completely uh, transparent or um, opaque. It's kind of this translucent smoke color. And you can see the Beagle Bone fits very nicely into it. Um, it's great for Beagle Bone Blacks because it has the, um, all the slots that you need for like, the HDMI and stuff. They're just really lovely cases. I, I like the um, uh, Arduino version of this case. And uh, so we decided just to pick up, sight unseen, the Beagle Bone Black version as well. So super gothy. Okay. Um. Next up. Okay. It's a new. It's a segment of the show I like to call Blind Phil. Yay! And, uh, this is one we turn Phil. on. Lots of bright LEDs. Now this isn't. This isn't too crazy bright. So um. Let's see what happens here. This is a um, that's, flexible. That's nice. Yes, this is a flexible matrix of eight by eight NeoPixels. So anything that can control NeoPixels. Um, or WS2812 or 2011 LEDs can use this. I'm just running like a, a matrix demo. It, it, it zigzags, like it's actually one strand of LEDs that zigzag all the way around. And what's nice is that it's on a flex PCB, so you can kind of bend and twist it. Um, much like all the other flex PCBs that we have, we have this also in 8x32 and also 16x16. This is the, the teeny one. Um, these are probably really good for wearables because they're flexible, so they're not going to be sharp and pointy and like, ow because um, they will move with you. However, these are not designed for repeated flexing. Um, they will eventually crack. Um, flex PCBs were meant to be bent around a, a shape and then kept that way, like the, in an enclosure or something. But they're not actually designed for repeated flexing. So you can, but we don't warranty it. So like, be super careful. Don't try to bend it too much. Uh, don't have a lot of repeated flexing. And if they crack, you might have to replace or solder the LED to repair it. But other than that, it's a beautiful, and flexible um, LED matrix. Okay, next up. <coughs> Ooh, it is a humidity sensor. Um, this is a TI HDC 1008 humidity sensor. Um, they have two versions, the 1000 and 1008. 1008 is a lot cheaper and the, the precision isn't that much different, it's like 3% versus 4%. So you know with a 4%, it's, but it's a lot less expensive. And this is like the least expensive humidity sensor for the precision. Like there, you can get a DHT11 or DHT22, but they're not nearly as precise as this one. This has like 0.2, uh, 0.2 degrees centigrade temperature precision and like 4% uh, 
uh, precision on humidity. Um, what's really nice about this is it's I squared C. You can have up to four on one I squared C bus because you can change the addresses. You can have four different addresses. And it's both three volt and five volt safe. So you can use it with like any microcontroller. You certainly don't have to worry about level shifting or anything. Works with three volts, work with five volts. And I even have a little demo to show over here. Hold on, let me set this up. Um, push this out of the way. So uh, the demo I have here is I've got the breakout here connected to um, a Metro Arduino compatible. Um, I have this little LCD which is showing the temperature and humidity. And if I go like this. Well, it works. Um, the humidity goes up because I just breathed on it and, and made it very humid. Um, what's neat is the sensor is actually on the underneath of BGA chip. So while it's not like waterproof, you know, like if you dunk in water, you know, definitely you're not going to be happy about it. Um, but it is protected from like debris and um, some like top oxidation and from getting stuff on top. A lot of times the sensor element for a sensor chip is on the top, but for this one it's on the bottom. So it's kind of, it, it's just, uh, you know, there's enough space between the bulbs of the BGA to get air through, um, but not so much that you have to worry about stuff scratching it or, or stuff getting in. So it's, it's a nice solid state sensor. Um, you can also heat it up by putting your finger on top of it. Uh, it's a very nice temperature sensor as well. Really easy to use. Um, we have Arduino code for it, but it's probably uh, trivial to port it to any microcontroller you like. And it's a, it's a nice chip from TI. Okay. And last but not least, we get some more LEDs. Yeah, this is the LED Magician. And this is an interesting product that um, a Singaporean uh, uh, magician, I guess, uh, LED electric, electrical engineer, email us and I was like, this is an interesting product. So I have a demo that I'm going to show for you. Maybe I'll have my assistant, Mr. Lady Ada, help me out. Um, but this is the board you get. You get this thing. And this is basically, <clears throat> like it's a PIC microcontroller. It's basically like an Arduino or a microcontroller that's pre-programmed with a bunch of LED effects and it has um, high output drivers so it can drive like LED strips that are like 12 volts or like big you know collections of LEDs. It doesn't do digital LEDs, it only does like analog LEDs. But what's nice about it is um, it has all the programming done for you and it has a lot of like really common effects. So if you need a certain kind of effect with, with um, a microcontroller and LEDs, LED strips, and you don't want to program, this one you just you just kind of like solder, connect, and you're ready to go. And it's like super easy and fast. And I thought that's kind of like useful, especially for like uh, oh, costumers or prop makers who <clears throat> who want to. Whoa, that's really bright. Um, who want to like have effects without programming. So what's also nice is down here, there's LEDs on the board that mimic what the output is. So that's like really nice. So let me see. Can do what? So there's different effects. So here's a different effect. It's one of the effects. What was super bright? Let's do another one. It's another effect. So there's like 30 or something effects built into this. Sorry, it's so bright. You're dying, huh? It's okay. Um, and I think you can you can lower the speed or brightness or something. So yeah, it does a bunch of different things and there's like an animated GIF and also um, on the product page, we I think go through all the different effects that you can do, but I like it. I think it'll be really handy for people who are doing props and uh, want to blind fill and, um, and don't want to do any programming, yeah. especially for like, oh, I want just like a, you know, like a marquee and I just want the LEDs to do something. So this, this could be a good okay. uh, helper for your props or theater or costuming. <clears throat> and with that, Lady Ada, Guess what that was? New products? That was new products. Good Yay! Work.